think it's important for everyone to take stock of the fact that on Friday the 24th and today, we're still in Europe. We're still a part of Europe. We still have all the responsibilities of being a part of Europe. We still have all the obligations and protections that come from being in Europe. And that will be the case for at least another two years, if not for longer, uh, given, the, um, given the signs coming from the, from the UK over what seem to be you know, delays on potentially invoking Article 50, at least another two years. I also think it's important to remember that assuming an exit from Europe by the UK were to happen, we don't know what that would look like. I think it's clear that there is still a very strong desire, even if that exit were to happen, for there to be remaining access to the single market in Europe. I think we would need to expect that Gibraltar would be able to continue to be a part of that. So it could well be that even if an exit in two to three, however many years, were to happen, that it could still be, as far as Gibraltar is concerned and the financial services sector are concerned, actually very much very little changing. And that means that for now it's very important for licensees, for us in the Commission, uh, to remain calm and very much work on business as usual. So you're not expecting a significant number of companies working in financial services in Gibraltar to pack up and leave as a result of Brexit because we have already seen one in the past few days? I think there will be some uh, that will maybe on the back of other plans that they've had, uh, you know, maybe looking to leave. But on the whole, my experience with the licensees in Gibraltar uh, is that for a lot of them, their main market is the UK. For others who have been looking to passport into Europe, they they are by and large very sane, rational people, and they will be thinking on well, what could this potentially mean. They will also understand that there is still much to play for and a long time frame over which this could happen. We are certainly very happy to have conversations with any licensees that want to come in and talk to us about their business plans and, and about their thoughts on what the implications for these could be. And we're very happy to have those conversations. Our business of being a regulator, of being a responsive regulator, working very closely with the industry and the government will continue and becomes, I think, even more important uh, given the outcome at the end of last week, if it's possible for it to be even more important than it was before. <laughs> So just to be clear, for the foreseeable future, the FSC and its licensees all have to comply with all existing EU directives as well as those which come on stream in the coming months? Yes. And that's incredibly important. Uh, we remain in Europe. It is very likely that uh, we will continue to have access to the single market. We are obliged to implement all of the European requirements, both the ones that we are currently implementing and the ones that are on stream. If, as I think we must expect, uh, some, if not completely full access to the single market will continue, we don't want to end up with an outcome in two or three years' time whereby we haven't continued to comply with the European obligations and all of a sudden we're actually really on the back foot as a jurisdiction. So my, my message is it really is very much business as usual and that is to the benefit of the jurisdiction and the licensees in the jurisdiction. We would be doing no one any favours at all to shut up shop when it comes to delivering compliance with European obligations. Even if the worst were to come to the worst and outcomes that none of us hope are, are the outcomes that we need, we will still be in the business as a jurisdiction of exporting financial services to other jurisdictions, whether it be as a third country or whether it into the EU or whether it be to jurisdictions elsewhere. It is very important that we deliver those services to the standards that are expected in those jurisdictions, whether it is the UK, whether it's Europe, or whether it's countries elsewhere. And we would not be doing our job if we took the pedal off and really put Gibraltar at a significant disadvantage in, 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 in having access to those markets.